I am Missy Lynn Cawthon. I am the owner of Dragonfly Pilates Studios and a new adventure that I will talk about later. Okay. Um, I also am the slayer of dragons and the <laughs> tamer of other wild beasts, it seems, these days. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, um, I teach, I mentor, I shape. I, I feel like I do so many things. Sometimes it's hard to just be plain with one. How about that? Yeah, no, that, which is fine, right? We all have many things that are our babies. And uh, I see Naomi Stolteri, she's the co-owner of this building uh, that I do my training out of. And I just think of her like she's a co-owner and she has a baby. And there's so many people out there like her who would benefit from a conversation with you, like just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Because I just think that you are, you. I think, yeah, I just think you're all that. And uh, I was saying, I was saying to her husband, actually, that um, the way we met was just so casual, right? Like we were both sitting, waiting to take pictures on this photo shoot in Sacramento for Balanced Body. And it was like, okay, cool. She's cool. And James, yeah, he's a nice guy. And stuff like, who knew that we'd be like disconnected still. And me being so new to the Pilates world at that time, I didn't realize, you know, how big you were how big I he don't is think that at that time i mean i wouldn't say that i'm big now even i just kind of feel like i'm i'm present and i'm having a moment and you know that's okay and james too i think you know we were a group of people that came together to do a photo shoot and um it's so rare i think that people just click like that but we all just kind of fell into this really cool vibe and yes. You know, I just remember thinking at the end, geez, I'm really going to be sad to see these people go. And usually mm. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get away from this. <laughs> I mean, my, my air, but it was just so easy. And, you know, I'm really, really glad and grateful that we all still chat because it's been um, really nice and enriching. And it's been really awesome to see you just blow up. It's yeah. been Thanks. It's been a fun ride doing this journey together. For sure. You know, um, and, and that's it. You know, as much as I, my definition of success is really having impact and living life on purpose. Love. Love. It's, you feel that my eyes are going already. But, um, you know, the idea of living life on purpose, I, I think for so long, I mean, if you think back, because we're the same age, I think, if you think back to the way we were taught to do things when we were younger, you know, it was all about, you know, the poker face, don't show emotion, especially mm -hmm. not fear, you know, show people just enough of who you are, but not so much that they really think that they know you. And so much of that has changed now that we are in this social media landscape and socially isolated or physically isolated, I would say. Um, you know, we've all had to find workarounds and new ways to, to connect with people. Yes. And, um, you know, being intentional about the way you connect is so important when you're so far removed from what a normal connection would look like. Yes. So it's been interesting watching how others weave it all together and trying to find the right balance for myself as well. Absolutely. Um, things like silence. <laughs> right. I, in, in the counseling setting that's one of the things that teaches to be able to use silence in a in a setting where you're face to face with somebody that silence can be powerful to ask a question and wait to let them reflect and collect their thoughts and and piece it together that takes time but that feels so awkward doing that on a screen when we have dead time here i'm a lot more comfortable with it now but at first oh i completely understand that because yeah. that is once again, that's kind of like a no-no. That's something that they teach you not to do. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the power of silence. And it also, I think, has forced us to become better listeners. Yes. 
you know, doing these interviews and I am the first person to space out in the middle of my own sentence. Well, if I space out in the middle of your sentence and my <laughs> sentence, this interview is really going to suck because where are we going? Right. You know, um, I've had to, you know, tamp down my, oh, squirrel moments and, and hone myself in on, on what's happening. And I think it's helped me professionally as, as well. And just as a mm-hmm. business person and, as a partner to my family, who I see a lot more now that I'm actually at home, you know, I can actually pay attention <laughs> at least <laughs> one third better than I used to. There so, you go. It's, a- <laughs> it's all, we're all about celebrating progress here. So that's right. It, whether it's a, baby steps or big giant leaps, you got to mm. take what you got and, and exactly and bask in the victories, right? Yep, absolutely. How would you define success? <laughs> oh, you went right for it, didn't you? Um, for me, being successful, it, it, it's, it's kind of on a continuum. But mm-hmm. for me, it's a matter of doing something, achieving something, and being at peace with what that is and not nitpicking and not, you know, spinning around in circles over it. I'm a ruminator. I'm one of those people mm-hmm. that we'll look at things from every angle and up and down. And what you said at the start was very, very important about just, um, you said you have to live through it. Yes. When I'm able to live through something and breathe it and achieve it and appreciate it, then I feel I've succeeded. And sometimes that's like a colossal fall on my face even. Right. Yeah. But if I can own that and, and, and see the, the silver lining, then I feel like I've done something positive. Yeah, absolutely. But that process, like you said there, it's, it's simple, but not easy. Indeed. Because when we do the define it and then achieve it, what happens between the define and achieve part? I think it just depends on what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, why are you going dark there? Sometimes, Sometimes you're ready to make that definition, but you're not prepared for what comes next. Yes. So sometimes you just say, you know what, this is what it's going to be. And then you have to step back and say, now I have to prepare myself to achieve. Yes. Other times it's, you know, I have been waiting for something that whatever it is comes about, you define it, and then you just dive right in. Mm-hmm. And I think that in order to be successful, you have to be able to decide when is the right approach at the right time. Yes. Yes. And yeah, like my, Megan's saying here, like celebrating the awareness of that process is, is so key. Whatever the topic was, like yesterday we were talking about body awareness and, and body shaming and stuff. Like, but it's awareness that starts that process of changing, you know, that movement towards success. Um, if I was to take this conversation down like one more level of practicality, the space behind me is um, a lot of Alex's, you know, her, you know, the pictures and just the spacing and the layout and the color schemes and stuff. So my wife is all about that kind of stuff. I have this little mini whiteboard here and I felt like in the first few weeks of doing this, that it was great that I had the spaces organized and stuff, but I just needed a whiteboard where I could scribble down August 14th core connections, August 26th podcast launch, core conversations, Jason, Nikki, Misty, Bianca, Katie. And I needed it to be in front of me all the time for me to be able to move towards success with it. It's like your carrot. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't match the room. It's ugly. My printing looks like an architect who didn't pass architecture school. And it's there in front of me. And that's all I need to keep me chasing after my goals. The in between the defining it and achieving it. Yeah, I, I think um, it's a process, right? And and mm-hmm. some of us have really, really rigid processes that we have to, to go through. And we have boxes that we have to check in yes. order to move forward. And others, 
are kind of a fly by the seat of their pants. Like I've defined this and now I'm going to go on to the next step while I'm starting a new project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all process differently and we all digest in a way that is kind of native to the way our brain works. Yes. Um, I think one of the challenges for me has been recognizing that the as I've aged, what I've aged, as I've aged <laughs> you, <laughs> as I've aged, my brain works very differently now. Mm -hmm. I mean, twenty years ago, I could never write anything down. I didn't need to. I would remember things. I, I have a highly sensory memory, so I could remember something based on the smell of the room I was in, and da 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 da. Well, now I am Captain Distraction, and I will stand and run around this chair 15 <laughs> times if I don't have a clearly plotted path as to what's next. Yes. But that said, I also, I'm okay with stuffing a few extra things in there, here and there, as long as it doesn't take me away from my mission. And yet, I still say that sometimes we get distracted because that's the right thing. It's, yes. Growth is not something that we can have a stranglehold on because how do you grow if you're choking yourself to death? Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. The, um, I, I think it, I, it was Black Cat Plies Hamburg, Caroline, who said uh, vision board. And uh, I'll ask you about vision boards in a second, but I would say that my board isn't exactly a vision board and I'm not against vision boards. But I feel like vision is too far out for me. Like I don't need, and you may not be thinking of it this way, but I don't need a picture of a Lamborghini on my vision board to be like, okay, I'm chasing after that. I just need to do it, know what I'm doing in the next three days. Because if those habits are correct, they will take me on that linear path towards wherever I'm going. So I don't need to look too far out. Like I'm surprised that I had August 26th and I made it because I usually have like... <laughs> three days ahead of me and that's about it right so um so the vision in a sense yes but not like way out their vision just like habits and best practices and processes next next step stuff but what's your thoughts on vision boards you know i think if it works for you then do whatever it takes i mean if running around on full moon naked playing a banjo is your way of moving forward <laughs> then do it don't send pictures but <laughs> I also think that um, I'm kind of like you in that I am more of a short-term planner because that kind mm -hmm. of builds me into the long-term vision. Yes. But I, I'm also not one of those people that has to have a bunch of check boxes to execute mm -hmm. because that for me can sometimes become overwhelming. I create yes. that scaffold. And then I build onto the scaffold as I go along, kind of like building a house. Um, yes. you know, don't just look at the house and say Shazam, and there it is, and it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. For me, going from you know working on my business to the Lambo is only going to make me stressed out about, well, gosh, I've been doing this for six months. Where's the car? You know, yes. I, I'm a big thinker sometimes to my own detriment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to stay you know, straight and narrow. Right, exactly. And as Michelle is saying with the banjo, Joe, I can't, I already can't unsee the naked banjo by the moonlight <laughs> image. That's, that's tattooed in there. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I believe in parting gifts and that's a parting gift too. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so say some more about intention. We, we, we glazed over that purpose and intention and I like wrestling with words sometimes, like content versus joy, all those different things. So like right now, purpose versus intention. Yeah. Differentiate those two for me. So purpose for me is a, it's a cool word. So getting into the word wrestling, um, to me, it's more of a black and white kind of, binary type of word okay Where intention intention has it has roots and it has legs and it is vision intention is the direction that you have to align with in order to not only proceed to your purpose but to find growth within it 
I wouldn't say that I am a purpose driven person, mm -hmm. but I am working more toward being a intentionally aligned person so that the work that I do, the people that I meet, the engagements that I take on are things that feed me, not just whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So purpose equals impact and intentions, which equals objective. Would you say that, is it, is it not enough to say there are synonyms? It's kind of like being complacent versus being happy. For me, complacent is a bad word. I just said it and actually I got a few little palpitations there. Yes. Complacency for me is static. Mm -hmm. Purpose is kind of like once you get there, meh, now you gotta find a new purpose. So intention then is like your journey and purpose is your destination. Correct. Correct. And then along the way for me, I'm checking, I'm, I'm looking in, I'm saying, you know, what is it about this that is fulfilling me so that this purpose is more than just the black and white. That's kind of why I, I started looking into business and pe the way people create and visualize and then operate their businesses mm -hmm. is because I saw a lot of, you know, check boxes and people that would ask me for business advice, uh, check, check boxes being marked, but what it was lacking was the, the intention that gave the business life. Yes. It's the life component that people want. It's the life component that makes people stay. Yes. And so it's something that, in building anything we have to kind of consider in order mm -hmm. for it to feed us and feed our public. Right, so our catchphrase is the why. What is your why? But is that why the purpose is the why your intention? It depends on how you're framing it. Yeah. So yeah. why am I opening, uh, why am I starting this, this new business adventure? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons, um, I'll use this as a small R reason, is because I just feel like it's something I'm supposed to do. Now, right. is that an intention or is that a purpose? I don't even know how, how I would classify it. It's just my truth. Yes. Um, but the, the why, capital R why behind it is because I want to help people get past that point of stuck, help them find their catalyst to take mm -hmm. them forward. It's the spark. That yes. spark is what we miss when we're thinking just about checking boxes and goals, 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 goals. Snore, somebody kill me. It's got to be more than just goals. Yes. It's got to be fulfilling. Yes. Right. So that purpose is too static for you, whereas intentionality is more live. It's 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 a living document. Yes, intention is to alignment. For me, it's just the way I process. Yeah. If I'm aligned with what it is and what I'm doing, and I'm proceeding about it intentionally, then it all kind of funnels together, and then I get this tree of life. If I'm thinking about an image in my mind. Yes. But if I'm just doing it to do it, you know. Why am I washing my car? Because it's dirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no love in washing my car. Now, uh, granted, you drive a beautiful red Porsche. I love cars a little bit. Yes. And so, you know, washing that car probably gives you joy. The time uh, uh, and effort that you put into mm -hmm. that car, researching and taking care of it, that gives you joy, that feeds you. So that's a right. little bit different. Right. But at the same time, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that as an example, because I did a post about washing that car, but the caption was, my father taught me the value of taking care of your stuff. So whether it's new and shiny or old and beat up, I washed my $800 1981 Volvo 240 the exact same as I washed that Porsche. 
because I was taught the value of. So there's a process in there. There's an intentionality to that. Like, the intention is to display showing value and gratitude for the things you have so that my kids see that same thing and that others may be inspired to do that, right? So it's it's interesting how like there there is a purpose or an intention to even the smallest detail of washing a car that I choose to take a picture of it to send a message that there is a, a lineage of having appreciation and gratitude for material possessions. But it's also honoring and respecting somebody that took the time to give you that lesson. Yes. That lesson stuck with you. That lesson feeds you to this day. Mm. And so you choose to continue to honor it. I mean, my dad told me a lot of stuff that I completely ignored, <laughs> but it's those little nuggets like that that have shaped me, shaped you, yes. um, and keep you being who you are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a beautiful thing when you're doing that in business, because what we're doing is we're reconnecting people to those messages, aka their core values that are going to steer where they go with their business. Right. And the idea of core values is key, right? It's not just about, oh, I want to open a cheese boutique because, you know, cheese is great and more people should eat cheese. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's all well and good, but who cares? Right. Why is right. opening a cheese boutique something that you feel like you need to do in your heart? Because if you're not bringing that into your planning, your Marcom, any of those things for your cheese boutique, it's just like cheese boutique number seven in your city. Who cares? Yes, right. right. It's you, the way to stand out is to bring yourself into your business. And like mm -hmm. we said earlier, like I said earlier, back in the day that wasn't done, you know, business right. school in the eighties, the nineties, the early aughts, it would have told you not to do that. Right. But now we have to personalize. We have to bring our heart and soul and everything we have, maybe not everything, many things are, many are, things. are gifts to our businesses in order to survive the competition is enormous. And honestly, the competition for our own time is enormous too. If it's not right. serving us well, then we're not going to give it the effort or the effort that we give it is going to be based on the stress and the exhaustion and the, the fatigue that comes behind the business, not the right. love and joy and the service. Right. Yeah. Well, I always wrestle with how much of yourself do you put out there as well, right? Like when is it, you know, when are you just bleeding on people? And when are you actually just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, I'm not to, not to hate on people that do this, but like when people identify themselves with something that happened to them, this is maybe a whole separate conversation we're going, but like we identify with something that happened and then that, how can I put it? It's one thing to share things that happen in your world to identify and connect with people. It's another thing to identify yourself by something that's happened to you. So like trauma porn. Thank you. Welcome. So, I mean, there are people that are just sharers. Mm -hmm. There are people that will share anything. I am one of those people that can be at the grocery store like this, you know, walking <laughs> and people come up to me. And then when my husband left me, I was so, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there are people that are just sharers and there are people that just kind of draw that to them. Yes. Um, I think that it all comes down to being authentic. You know somebody who's sharing a story with you because they're just trying to get your bucks. And yep. someone sharing a story with you because they feel like that's going to help you in some way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny because my, my friend Chella, who's probably on this call, or at least she was earlier. Um, she works, we work together. She helps me with my business. And, um, you know, one of the things that she has said to me from the beginning is you don't talk about yourself enough. And I'm like, because who cares? <laughs> and she says, but you have to understand that if you don't talk about yourself, people think you're some sort of robot. And I'm like, robots are nice. I love them. 
<laughs> I like shiny robots. <laughs> exactly. They're shiny. They make beeping noises. Nowadays, they'll get me something to eat. But in, in ruminating over what she was saying, hi, Blossom, mm -hmm. um, and, and pondering it and just saying, you know, am I willing to lean in to being uncomfortable? Because that for me is a little bit uncomfortable just because I like to be the master of my kingdom. And that doesn't necessarily mean sharing it all. Right. What I did realize is there are so many other people that are like me that, you know, have been hurt by keeping those walls up. Right. It does affect how you relate with other people and mm -hmm. the people that you draw into your sphere professionally, interpersonally, or whatever it is. Right. So, you know, I think it just depends on the audience and, and what you want people to know about you. I mm -hmm. want people to know that while, yes, I do like robots, I am a living, breathing, sentient human being that really does care. My 9 a.m. class yesterday thinks I don't care, just so you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I do care. Still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> they're bitter. They're hating. They're getting yeah. t-shirts made. They're not nice. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I want people to to realize that I do care. I don't do these things that I do. And I don't think you can be in our business and not have that human component of caring and helping and sharing. Something. I think you can. So I think you can. Well, I think there's enough, there's enough formulas out there that you can. Well, yeah, but people feel formulas. I think they do. They do. And it, it, for me anyway, it doesn't feel good. I, I like puzzles and mysteries and I'm going to be focused on your, mystery and i'm mm -hmm. not gonna be focused on anything else you said because that to me is the shining object at the minute yes right exactly i think that there's something to be said for being a leader by being vulnerable too yes the v word nikki and i you know my friend nikki taylor stewart yes. my co-host for thought flow um she's always talking to me about being vulnerable mm -hmm. like, I am vulnerable on Tuesdays. Right. You thought flow on Thursdays. So. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, vulnerability is such a big deal, and it's not something that we appreciate in our culture. Nope. But it's because part of it is because the vulner vulnerability, like you said, needs to come from a place of authenticity. Yes. Right. I could just and throw stuff out there and right. it's, it's not relevant and it's not important. And it's, and it's, it could be pity seeking. So it's not vulnerable at that point. It's, it's like just class and somebody they're whining all of the, the instructors whining about how, you know, how they could never do that exercise that well because of X, Y, Z. And you're like, mm -hmm. I just want to have my class now. Yeah. You don't right. want that pity vote. Right. Certainly. And you don't want it to become trauma porn, but at the same time, you know, it's just all about modulation, right? Modulation. Not There's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes we don't recognize the time or the place. Right. Oh, yeah, bad. Not good. Yeah, yeah. Who would you say is your ideal client for your new business? Funny you should ask, Martin. Um, so in sitting down and, and looking at what this is, and you know what mentoring is versus coaching and all of these things i want i am looking to work with people who are really willing to roll up their sleeves and get dirty and be honest and be vulnerable so you don't even have to have a, a business that's been in existence for 20 years and you're looking to tweak it and make it better sometimes getting in and getting together at that idea stage where you think I have this great idea, but I'm not sure what to do with it. A lot of people choke those fantastic ideas back and they never share. Yes. Getting in at that early stage where it's still kind of this, this shiny new toy and you want to keep it close and look at it and pet it. Th those people I love working with. But at the <laughs> same time, you know, as a studio owner for 13 years, you know, having that ability to talk to somebody about my business and mm -hmm. tweak it and reshape and build again is, is important too. So for me to work with anybody that's just wanting to get into it. Yes. Nitty gritty, deep diving stuff. Those are my ideal clients. 
So the Pilates instructor who is working in a big box gym, who is deciding to go out on their own and wants to figure out what their next step are. And they don't yeah. know if they want to open a building, if they just want to work subcontracted. They don't know if they want to travel and work in Costa Rica or if they want to, that's your person. Or if they want to build a virtual platform versus planning to move into the brick and mortar. You know, there's so many things to decide now because we are living in a different world. Yes. And, you know, I think if you talk to a conventional business strategist, they're going to say, well, you know, this is the way you do things conventionally. But we are not in a conventional business. We right. are micro businesses. We are driven by the power of one typically, and that's us. And, you know, we have families. We have all these other components that we have to consider. So yes. we can't throw ourselves willy nilly out there and, and throw all the spaghetti to the window and hope it sticks. Mm -hmm. We have to come up with a, I'm not going to say a checklist, but we have to kind of have a workflow mm -hmm. as to how we pursue where we're moving going forward, how we spend our dollars, yes. what it looks like. It's not just sit down and write a business plan based on a framework and move ahead. There's mm -hmm. so many more components that have to be considered. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't even know what questions to ask at this point. For sure. Because, you know, how long are we going to be in this state? Right. You know, I have a, a friend, a dear friend who's considering starting a life coaching and nutrition business. And it's the mm -hmm. same thing. Well, the landscape is different. I would have opened a brick and mortar before. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to meet people but all of my traditional ways of meeting people at my yes. kids' sporting events or, you know, sitting in the, the bleachers at a something else, um, those are all gone. They're gone, right. So how do I do that? That's, that's the deal. It's a very different landscape. Yes. We, I mean, we think and we, we digest the landscape and we digest your category, your market category, mm -hmm. and then we come up with strategy. I love this. I, I love that stuff too. And I, what's exciting about that is much like a counseling setting for me, where you go into it not actually having any answers for the person. Yes, it's completely naked. It is so naked, and it's such a collaborative no effort. No banjos, no banjos necessary. <laughs> Um, earlier joke, if you just tuned in, yeah, watch the replay and wish that you didn't. You're going to love it. <laughs> um, listen to him. Yeah. But like, there's a, there's a confidence that, that comes with that. And there's an excitement that like some people shy away from that, but I personally am excited by going into that conversation, trusting your listening skills and being able to mine out the answers from this person as they're saying it even though you walked into it with neither of you actually, actually have any answers for them. And then working from that point, that's exciting. That's an exciting process to me as I, I see it is for you. I, I mean, just talking about it, I'm getting excited. I just love, I'm, I like to have variety, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously I'm not going to run out and open a new business and this and that anytime I, I have a whim that I want to explore. Mm -hmm. You know, this serves me in that I get to learn, meet new people, first of all, that's my, right. my thing, but I get to learn about what makes people tick and right. their why. And then mm -hmm. I can help them put that into a package that helps them move forward. We, you know, we will build a, a project blueprint of whatever it is that we're looking at. And maybe it's not a huge global type of business idea. Maybe it's just a component of the business. Yes. But we talk and we talk a lot and we listen and we break down and we revisit and we massage. And mm -hmm. then we get to that point where the intent and the alignment come together. Yes. To find the purpose. Love you know, it. I yeah. That's a beautiful circle and weave <laughs> tactic. I see you. I see you. Uh, we do flow like so similarly. It's just like some of the rooms we've been in, virtual rooms we've been in, and just hearing each other talk. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, that's it. Yeah. It's super easy. I know. Yeah. I, if anyone's listening and they've not done an interview with Martin, let me tell you, don't be nervous about it when you do because it's just smooth. It's so like smooth. a 
fine cognac. It's just easy. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I like it too. It's it's. I mean, it's really easy. Yes. The uh, Randy Moore, I believe it was, Rudy Pilates. Hmm, yeah. I uh, yes. So I asked her what her ideal client was, and she still to this day gave the best answer. She said somebody who is curious and courageous. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. I like that for so many reasons. Yes. And I think that helping people get to that point where they're able to recognize if they are or not is important too. Because you can't really get into a business, in my opinion, especially in this landscape, without being courageous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of have to be a little bit of a beast about it. And I'm not saying that you have to go out and be like Hulk smash violent, like no, no. destroy yeah. the marketplace. But I am saying that it is fraught with peril. If you are not really willing to just get out there and do it, you should probably find something else to do because it's mm-hmm. it's completely unpredictable like i say it's like a toddler that yes. is all the time and angry right yes but but that same toddler it's funny that the courageous the, the courageous part like leaped off the page for me but the more i've rehearsed that line it's the curious part that is now speaking to me more yeah i mean it, you have to be don't you you have Absolutely. to. Well, I mean, you should be. I don't want. You don't have to be anything. You could be a turnip, but <laughs> you have to really to be successful. It once again getting back to like early days of business school, like pre business school, even you have to be willing to investigate. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to look under the stones, and not just those stones out there, not just the marketplace. Your stones. Right. You have to look and see, yes. is this really something that I want to do, that I want to plunge my time and effort and dollars and dreams into? Mm-hmm. You can't just dive in. Right. And that curious piece, too, asking the right questions of yourself, like you're saying there, is so key. And I think that that's what feels like curiosity <laughs> is to now as you ask those questions, the answers to those questions are the things that require, that's when you need to recruit that courageousness. And honesty. And honesty. Which all comes back to that alignment Mm -hmm. and the Mm -hmm. intention. You know, you can give a textbook answer all day. Right. But is that your truth? Are you really saying that because that's how you feel? Or are you saying that because it's the right answer? You know, and it's my job as the coach or the mentor when I'm working with people to be able to say, do you really feel that way? Do you really thinking dancing, think dancing in the moonlight with the banjo oh, no. <laughs> help your gardening business? Right. Yeah. How, how does that work for you? Mm-hmm. And how will that work for your public? Right. But if they can give you a great answer for dancing in the moonlight with the banjo. I mean, if they can give me a great answer, I'm buying whatever it is. Right. Yes. I don't care. And, right. And I'm recording it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but that's their why. Like, that's their values. Right. That's what they land at. So it's, exactly. It's not my job to poo-poo your why. Mm-hmm. It's only my job to make sure that you've really thought it through. Yes. And that you're comfortable. Right. Because if you can make that work, mm-hmm. if you're like, you know what, the best time to be out in the moonlight is when you're naked with a banjo. (laughs) If you can pull all of that together and make it make sense and say, and this is how we're going to get out there. Then I say, then let's, let's flesh that out. That strategy of getting it out there is the way we're going to make it work. Right. (laughs) You said that with a straight face. Well done. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I just open my mouth and words fall out. I don't exactly know why. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the word catalyst that we, we were, I actually wrote down the word catalyst to talk about that in my intro and I didn't even get there. And then you said it during a conversation. And once again, going to the space behind me, it's really been interesting how certain things have been a catalyst for me getting to this point with this hundredth episode, with this podcast launch, 
with this broadcast center, with this micro business. I have to thank you, Misty, for this. Because wow. one of our conversations, right in the middle of it, you said the word micro business, which leapt in my spirit. And I wrote it down and I realized that that was the word capturing everything that I'm doing right now. That word went to Andrew and to Naomi, who that also resonated with them, like, yes. And from there, my personal training business within this space turned into converting this lunchroom into a Pilates studio, which is a micro business within their business, 200 square feet with a broadcast center, TVs on the wall, this whole space, space here. Wow. All from that one word, micro business. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. you know, listen, Martin, one thing that is very apparent from you that I knew from the minute that we met is that you're a person that gets things done. You move beyond the bullshit and you just sit down and you're like, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's what you did. When you find the spark, when the spark resonates, it's like hitting a tuning fork. Yes. When the spark resonates and you get that vibration, you're inspired to move. Yes. And that's what you've done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's it was a catalyst. And then you see this space, just having a physical location, it justifies other things happening. And then it just continues to steamroll, right? So amazing things happening by just listening and just going with it and just being on purpose and having intention to everything you do. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's amazing. So I, I really do thank you for that. And I'm excited to see where your coaching mentoring business goes because that's in you, like those gems are in you and people, how can I put it? You never, never underestimate the significance of the insignificant. Yes. Yeah. Nothing is by accident. Nothing, nothing. So you throw words out there. If you're listening for for those who are watching this, when, when you're having these conversations and you are just being open and vulnerable and authentic in those conversations, those moments can happen. And you can say something to someone and it just, it just leaps within them. And you feel like, oh, I just threw that out there. Just you know, micro business, whatever. And the other person is like, ding, 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 ding. That's exactly, <laughs> like, I just hit the jackpot with that one word. Yeah, it, it's, um, words have power. Yes. Words have power. And sometimes, you know, I, I love podcasts and I'll play podcasts in the background. I have one that I'm going to start this week. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder whose podcast that is. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I'll be shuffling about doing a thousand other things. And I get my best nuggets when I'm not paying 100% attention. Yes. And that's when those gems that just shake me to my core happen. And I always jot them down because I yes. never, I'm going to need that little bit of something. And I'll go right mm -hmm. into my little notebook and I'll find it. Yes. So much to be learned through other people's experiences. And absolutely. Uh, that's why I like talks like this and you know, my thought flow conversation that happens on Thursdays. It's, mm -hmm. it's the power of stories and the power of conversations mm -hmm. that one links us all yes. and two helps us all grow together. It, 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 it narrows the distance. Yes. Us and our experiences. Absolutely. Closes the gap. Yes. What time is your thought flow on Facebook? So it is on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Other time zones are on your own because let's Can't do the math as fast in Chicago. You're, yeah. you're with me. You're straight up north of me, I think. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, 7 p.m. And we talk about everything. Uh, we are in the middle of a series about allies. We call it the Axis of Allies. And mm -hmm. we're just talking to different people about what it means to be an ally to them based on their life experiences. Yes. And, um, unfortunately, we're not broadcasting this week. Um, 
Nikki is having a family situation, so she's on her way down to Alabama. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll be back on next week. We may even pop in over the weekend if she's back in time. So really, really fun and interesting and kind of like your start. It was like, you know, we talk a lot. We should talk to each other and let other people listen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really it's turned great to a thing. So. Yes, it's really interactive, guys. Like I, I love just tuning in. Like I'll be sitting in the backyard, just barbecuing and just like spamming them <laughs> while you're it's talking. Not spamming. We love the interaction. It is yeah. so great just to, once again, just to connect and learn about people in a way that we just wouldn't, even right. under normal circumstances. I feel yeah. like people wouldn't share certain things, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. develop this community where people are able to say what they're thinking and know that they're safe. Yes. Yes. We went 56 minutes and just touched the word safe right now. It's all good. Great. <laughs> Lean in was one of the terms that you used earlier mm -hmm. and listen for it in Celia's uh, podcast later today. Amazing, isn't she? Oh, man. Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah, and that, that conversation, like when she talks about leaning into our fears and disappointments and changes, that was a game changer for me. For really, sure. Really, yeah. A powerhouse. I, I really like her. Yeah, yeah. I like her. She's like you. You all come from the same cloth. Pittsburgh. Australia. <laughs> Australia? Wait. Yeah. Not Cecile. Oh, oh it's, it's Cecile's in Pittsburgh. What? Yeah, Celia Jones. Oh, okay. I have to write that one down. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, yeah. Check her out. She's a, she's a Ramona-trained instructor in, in Australia. We had a conversation a few months ago, and it was such a deep, like, it was a really legit conversation, and uh, I, I thought it would be just fitting to use that one as our first conversation because that came out you know, I talked about my divorce and my marriage in there. Like, you know, when you just first conversation with someone and you just, here's everything. You don't <laughs> like, even know where it's going to go, but you right. know it's going to be good. Yes, exactly. So there, that's, there's our, that there's now. our teaser, no pun intended, for our four o'clock drop on the podcast. Yay. Awesome. I'm, it's going to happen. It is. So good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Martin. And I just want to throw out there, guys, my uh, new mentoring business, meetmistylynn.com. That's M-E-E-T. Love it. Misty Lynn with an E, dot mm -hmm. com. And uh, take a look. We are about to start our inaugural mastermind, a four-week program. And uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Misty Lynn at meetmistylynn.com. And... Uh, Looking forward to meeting you there. Is it L Y N N E? Correct. Like that? That is correct. Boom. Thank there you. you go. You're welcome. I'll put that in the um, in the H uh, in the IGT replay. And um, yeah, looking forward to having you on Core Connections in a couple of weeks too. Can't wait. It's I'm getting as much misty time as I can in. And it's gonna be awesome. I may. I, I may be relaxing here in the backyard again, you know, have a little tequila. It's going to be a Saturday night, right? Yes, that's right. I can't wait. Love it. It's going to be a great time, Martin. Thank you, as always, for a fantastic conversation.